This happened to my aunt in the 80s. It started with her having this weird dream, one about being abducted and medically tested inside of a UFO, the classic alien abduction nightmare. She remembered medical instruments near her face. That part was very vivid, but when she woke up with no pain, she thought nothing more of it. Except a few days later, she goes in for a routine dental appointment and gets x-rays. Then, the dentist shows her the x-ray images, and though it's clear from the images themselves, he tells her that there seems to be something under one of her molars. At first, I was skeptical hearing the story. Even though I knew my aunt had no reason to lie to me, I'd just never been much of a believer in anything supernatural or odd. But, I shit you not... More than a decade later, I saw the x-rays myself. It's clear from the initial x-ray that something was there. Something I assumed to be metal, rectangular, almost tubular in shape. Just sitting under one of her molars. Back then, she told me that she got a copy of the x-rays just in case someone she cared about didn't believe her. Or if something happened to her. She said keeping them around made her feel validated and grounded to earth in some way. After she got her x-rays, a few other dentists took a look at them too, even taking additional x-rays at the request of my aunt. They all witnessed the same anomaly. There are many witnesses if you include my own family, my mother, my grandmother. Once I'd seen for myself, no one could convince me that it wasn't real. Trust me, something was there. Anyway... Her original dentist decides that they have to take it out, at least biopsy it, verify that it's not cancerous. They make an appointment to do just that, something close to a week later. She wasn't in any sort of discomfort at the time, which both the dentist and my aunt found odd, but considered it all the more reason to investigate. My aunt says it was during this week that she had the same dream again, Two nights before returning to the dentist, medical instruments around her face, blinding white light, followed by dizzying blackness. She still felt no pain, but she couldn't dismiss the similarities between the two experiences. She describes being anxious but incredibly eager for her dental appointment at this time. She said she knew something would be different. Nearly a week later... They finally get to the appointment, and it begins with new x-rays. Here's where, in my mind, it gets even weirder. They find nothing. The dentist takes another x-ray for good measure. Nothing. Gone. I saw that x-ray, too. Nothing there. I get it. Some of you are thinking that this could be explained, and honestly, I would love to hear it. Of course, it seems unlikely that the dreams were real, that some alien left something under my aunt's tooth, then retrieved it when they found out it was going to be removed by a human dentist. There are possibly many explanations that I have yet to think of, or maybe it's even one of the ones I have thought of. Maybe something in the x-ray machine went wrong, or anywhere else in the process of obtaining the image. Perhaps her molar had an abnormal shape, Could be, though I think between multiple dentists, they would be able to explain that, and they couldn't. I honestly don't know. I do know that it was like nothing I'd ever personally seen, not even when scowling the internet these days. For probably obvious reasons, my aunt doesn't want her pictures online, or even on her own computer. I doubt she'd be okay with me taking a photo for the world to see, But it's not going to stop me from asking her the next time I visit her neck of the woods. I guess it's the only thing I've ever experienced that I can't explain. Even if it was secondhand, I can't properly explain it, so I thought it was worth sharing. Thanks for reading. I 
I was homeless in my 20s thanks to a gambling addiction, but then I found a job cleaning up at an old bar in the middle of nowhere. It was the perfect place to avoid the casino's call. There were only five or six customers at any given time, and they were all too old and drunk to cause any trouble. That being said, I'm not sure how the place stayed open, but I got paid and that's all that mattered. They closed at 2 a.m., and I would sweep up after starting the dishwasher. Eventually, I was trusted to close up on my own, so I started taking sponge baths in the bathroom sink, and I would smoke a few cigarettes out back before crashing behind the counter. I was in full survival mode. The back area was just a miles-long grass field with a forest at the other end. Nothing special. Sometimes I would lay on the ground and look up at the stars while I smoked and daydreamed, I didn't know which were stars or planets or where any of the constellations were, but that didn't make it any less serene. It actually became my favorite part of each day. Then one night, I had an experience that made me terrified of being outside at night. What I thought to be a shooting star streaked across the sky, then came to a sudden halt and began emitting a soft green glow. It only sat motionless for a minute before moving again, and this time, it was coming towards me. It grew bigger, little by little, until coming to another stop. I can't tell how high it was, but it looked like it was hovering directly over the back of the field. Next, the light started getting brighter until it hurt my eyes. I tried looking away, but I could still see the pale green light even through my eyelids. It made me dizzy, and I must have passed out because I only remember flashes after that. When I next opened my eyes, I was still on the ground, and three tall, gray beings were standing over me. They were humanoid in shape, but very different in appearance. Their heads were huge, with big, bulbous black eyes, straight out of something from an old sci-fi movie and they only had small slits for nostrils and mouths. Before I could even register more or even comprehend my situation, everything went black. The next time I regained consciousness, I was lying on something cold and metallic inside of a white room. Or maybe the lights were so bright it only looked white. I can't be sure. It's almost like a fever dream. Then a voice began to speak in my mind, telling me to sleep, and the world went black yet again. There was also a flash of being taken back into the bar. I have the vaguest memory of being carried up the porch steps, the sound of padded feet on the wooden deck. The final time I woke, it was 9 a.m., and I was in my sleeping bag behind the counter. My head hurt like the worst hangover of my life and I spent ten minutes in the bathroom, puking up a bunch of thick, clear liquid. I was still nauseous for most of the day afterwards, but there was no more mystery fluid spewing out of me. That night when I cleaned myself, there were small, quarter-sized bruises on my chest, abdomen, thighs, and biceps. They were sore to the touch, but faded a few days later along with the random dizziness that would suddenly overtake me. There was nowhere I could go. I had to continue working at the bar for another six months before I could buy a car and get out of the backwoods. But I never smoked after dark again. I don't know what the hell happened to me in that field, and I honestly don't want to know. I just don't think my mind would recover if I knew everything. This is the first time I've even thought about it in over 15 years. And I just couldn't stop, so I decided to share the experience. I have a life with a real family and a good job now. I didn't feel comfortable telling any of them about my ordeal, unless I sound crazy. But this seemed like a safe place to put it. I almost prefer that I was crazy, but it was all just far too real. <laughs> 